So today I've got a uh, little bit of a repair that I'm going to attempt here on the concrete of the steps. You can see the mortar is breaking down and allowing water to get in. So that's going to be my project today. Before I get started on this project, just a couple of things I'd like to uh, share with you. I'm just a homeowner, regular guy like many of you folks are out there. Uh, some of the things I like to do, I, I think I, it's well within my grasp to do it myself. I'm pretty much a do-it-yourselfer. But one of the things I do want to stress in you know, taking on any kind of a project, I can't stress enough the importance of uh, uh, you know, safety gear. Uh, personal protection equipment, PPE. Um, I work in the healthcare profession and uh, I do value my fingers a lot. I do value my eyes and other parts of my body. And uh, so when I finish this project, I want to be able to go in the studio and play music. Um, I don't want to be dealing with any injuries that can be prevented. Uh, you know, accidents do happen, but it's about risk assessment and managing those risks. So at the bare minimum, you know, invest in a good set of safety glasses, especially when using power tools, hammering, using chisels, anything, which that's all involved with doing any type of masonry work. Um, I use a, a mask, and guess what? Masks do work. Protect yourself. You don't want to be inhaling, you know, uh, dust, or anything like that that you're doing from grinding and or mixing materials. So wear a mask. And uh, as an added precaution, I use a safety shield, a, sh a full face shield as well. In addition to my safety glasses, um, it helps, you know, prevent any impact to your neck area or anything like that. So, you know, these are all OSHA approved. They're inexpensive. Pick them up at any of the big box stores. Use it. I mean, uh, and then of course, hand protection. Use it. Get a good, invest in a good set of gloves and uh, wear them necessarily you get used to it I mean I work on vehicles I've pulled car engines out before and stuff like that as well but you know, I it took a little while to get used to wearing gloves but I wear them all the time now when I'm doing a project I know sometimes there's some delicate work that you know you might need to take them off but the main idea is just be aware of your environment and be uh, safety conscientious and you know in working with any power tools and also, on a final note, avail yourself to all of the instructional videos on YouTube and you can become YouTube certified as well. Um, there's plenty of information out there and you can do these uh, repairs around your home yourself, especially if you're a first, first timer. Uh, some of these things might seem to be beyond your ability, but trust me, you can do it and that's the reason I'm doing it. I'm not a contractor, I'm not, I don't work in construction, but over the years I've develop a skill set and a confidence level that enables me to uh, successfully tackle most of the projects uh, around the house uh, that's within my ability. Um, at the very least, it gives you an education to speak more intelligently with other people when you realize it's beyond your uh, capability or you do not feel comfortable with it. Finally, uh, getting back to the safety things, also wear ear protection whenever you're using power tools. Um, your hearing is as important as all the other senses that you have, your eyesight, taste, whatever. So get a, best in a good set of uh, headphones, you know, ear protection, um, use earplugs, whatever, anything is better than nothing. And to also protect yourself from the environment. I mean, I've had a history of skin cancer. I don't have anything on top. So wear something on the top of your head to protect when you are wearing PPE. So invest in it. It's well worth the effort. You want to stay around as long as you possibly can for yourself and for your family, most importantly. So anyway, we'll get started. For this project, I'm going to uh, facilitate the use of a um, angle grinder. Um, angle grinders are probably about the second most dangerous tool that you can have in your shop outside of a uh, table saw. And that's not for me, that's from experts that I've uh, talked to and uh, they can be very dangerous. 
uh, just a couple of safety things. Never remove the shield on a grinder. On this particular grinder, it has a little key here that you can change the position of your um, of your gu uh, you know your guide. And that seems to yeah. But um, and you can rotate this to, to fit whatever need that you want. But you never want to remove it. Um, and you want to make sure that you use the proper um, wheel or a grinder, a wheel attachment for your for your make model, and always go with the appropriate size. This is a four and a half inch grinder. It's a four and a half inch wheel. The wheel is from the same manufacturer as the grinder, so I'm sure there's other <coughs> ones that can be used. But I've got a um, a wheel that's specific for masonry work. Uh, it's a diamond wheel. And you want to make sure that the rotation is correct. I know there's a lot of things concerning which direction that they go, but um, this is counterclockwise. And on your grinder, it'll usually have your direction uh, mentioned. So, like for here, it's it's going into a counterclockwise counterclockwise motion. Here's the arrow right here that that uh, demonstrates which direction it goes. So, basically, the wheel's going to go on this way. Okay, um, there's um, some really great safety videos on angle grinders and the proper use of them and a lot of information on the, uh, the wheels themselves, the cutters themselves, <clears throat> and I recommend reviewing those because uh, taking a safety course on this uh, can pre prevent um, injury or death or uh, whatever. So I would definitely recommend if you're not familiar with using the grinder. Um, your collet here, uh, there's there's a area here that's raised and an area that's flat. The raised, it goes down, they, there's different types of these. Some of the grinders themselves, they have the grinder discs, uh, they're depressed, they're concave, and so that will facilitate that. Again, there's a lot of uh, great information out there on the use of, uh, you know, proper installation, everything of the wheels and, the, and how this applies and stuff. I recommend really reviewing that. But this flat side is what's going to go against. We're making sure that the direction is correct. Also, your RPM rating. This grinder rotates. Its RPM rate is at 11,000 RPMs. This says maximum up to 13,300 RPM, so I'm fine. You definitely don't want to put a wheel that's rated lower than the grinder because it'll over um, stress the wheel and it could explode. And uh, my understanding is when these things are going around 11,000, 14,000 RPMs, um, that the fragments are, um, that come off of this, if they explode, are going around 200, 300 miles an hour. So that could cause some serious damage. Um, so you just, and this doesn't have to be tightened a great deal because the rotation is counterclockwise. This goes on to tighten to the right, so it's self tightening in a lot of ways. I've uh, I lost my original wrench, but they have these adjustable ones that are really nice. So I've got this up at a big box, and then later I discovered that on this particular model it has an Allen wrench opening, so you can put an Allen wrench in there and spin it off. But basically, you just put that right in place there, and you have um, you have a lock. You hold this, you depress this on this particular model. It locks the wheel, so you just press that in now it's locked that way that way now I can just take this spanner and come in here and tighten it and like I said you don't really have to crank on it you just want to make it snug there we go that's plenty so it's ready to go and this this wheel is specific for uh, masonry for cutting uh, you know in between joints and brick and cutting brick and stuff like that so that's what we're going to be using Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, I've got to do a little excavating or removing any of the loose material along in here and some of the old. So I'm just going to take this and this stuff is breaking off real easy, uh, hardly even tapping on it. So I'm just going to go down through here and just kind of remove these pieces. And uh, I've got a, uh, a mortar chisel, and I, I'm hardly even tapping this actually, but this has actually got 
metal going all the way through the handle, so I'm barely tapping on that. This works a little bit better to, the way the shape is to pull it out. But you know, you can actually, you know, you can use a mason's chisel as well. It's not really necessary at this point because I'm just getting in here and getting rid of the stuff that's in here right now. So I'll just continue to get this stuff removed and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I've removed most of the loose grout, the mortar in between there along the top. And of course, you know, it's a lot more extensive here because water has been running down through here over time and freezing and expanding with the ice and, and doing some damage along there. But again, doing this now because it hasn't compromised the, the structural integrity of the, uh, of the stairs, but it could in time, and I'd like to get this taken care of uh, before this winter. And this is uh, on the back side of the wall on the steps, you can see. So I'm going to fill that in with mortar, but on a project like this, it's, it's going to be a lot more extensive. But you can see it runs all the way down, and it's been repaired before. And down along the steps, along the edge there, that's going to need to be taken care of as well. But I found that it's best to break this off into smaller projects. Um, you know, don't overwhelm yourself trying to get it all done at once. And that way you can take your time and do as best the job as you can. Okay, I'm going to mix up some mortar. What I've got, I've, I actually had some of this left over from about a year and a half ago, some mortar mix uh, by Quickery. None of these products or you know, tools that I'm using are sponsored, so. But this makes it simple, it's already pre-mixed. I, I stored it in a shed in a dry place and it's still, still very, say, very powdery. So it'll work. And nothing's wasted if you store it properly. So for small projects like this, these small bags, of course, it's more expensive. But uh, I just need to just go ahead and use this up. First, make sure you're wearing your mask and mixing this stuff. Powder. All right. And just add a little water, try not to overdo it. Doesn't take a whole lot. I saw one guy add water using a sponge, which is a great idea. Probably would be smart. I'd be smart if I got my other bucket. Filled it with water, which I probably will. And if you put too much water in there, just add a little more more. So yeah, it's getting pretty good. I want it fairly thick. And that's that's pretty good right there. See, it's almost moldable. And it sticks on to the they're pretty good. And it kind of rolls off, but I'm going to be packing it down in the it might be a little too wet, but I'm going to wet the bricks as well because um, if you wet wet those a little bit, you'll have a better bond. You have to be careful, it can be messier, but if you just apply it to dry bricks. The bond isn't as strong, but there's a time when you want to do that. But for this project, I want to make sure I got plenty of working time, and so I'm going to have it a little bit on the wet side. I can always add a little bit more mix as I go along if I need to. It's always good to have a bucket of water close at hand, and also 
the water supply closer here. I did go back and add just a little bit more powder to it so you can kind of see that consistency. It's a lot thicker. See there, it stays on the stays on the trowel pretty good. So that way I can control it a little bit better. And you'll get a feel for it as you go along. You just have to play with it, practice with it until you feel comfortable with it. Okay, I'm going to moisten the area. Actually, probably it wouldn't be a bad idea just to spray it a little bit. It's a very hot day today, so not really worried about you getting too runny or messing up the brick, to be honest with you. And I'll wring this out real good. And I've got sponges and I've got a, a brick scraper, whatever they call it got this try and clean up anything it's pretty abrasive and I've got a sponge which does wonders okay so we're ready to start filling in the area to help these are great for filling in the cracks what's the proper name for that they call it a tuck point or like I said I'm no mason So, but these are these are projects that that you can do yourself. I've got this uh, repair mortar here by Quickery. It's pretty good stuff from what I've seen. Um, I'm going to, as you can see, it's even got a square end to it to facilitate, you know, mortar repair. And my understanding is the color's pretty good on it as well. But I'm going to use this as a backing since this is such a large space. There we go. I'm going to use this as a backing down inside. Because the mortar just seems to want to fall away down in there. This is a sealant. And uh, this will help support the mortar as I'm filling it in. It's a good color though, and it's actually got a grainy texture to it, I find. So, like for simple crack repairs, probably would be ideal. Check your weather. <laughs> I just noticed it sure is clouding over. They weren't predicting rain today, but I don't know. Probably a trial might work a little better on this. Too worried about making a mess at this point because you got the material, you know, the tools to clean that up. Let's get that filled in. And it's a, probably a pretty good consistency for this project. Take your time, and you can see why doing it in small sections at a time is best. It gives you plenty of working time because the project is small, and there's less chance for a great deal of waste. Just go down in there. 
in there. And I'm just going to continue with this and come back. So I just went over with my sponge, but you can get an idea on how it's turning out so far. So basically everything you can clean up with a sponge and uh, it's still a little too wet to get in there aggressively to get it really cleaned up. But uh, after about 15 or 20 minutes, it should be ready. I'll get that cleaned up and I'll move on down to the corner down there and focus on that as well as the corner down here on this end. finished uh, 
the top landing that needed the most attention and uh, kind of finished out the corner like that. Is it as good as what a professional would do? Uh, probably not. <laughs> but it works for me. It saved some money and also prevented you know further damage which is what's important. And like I said, you know, this is a job that just about anybody could really do easily.